encounter. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're glad you're joining us today. I realize that everybody's online with us this morning. We do have a skeleton crew here and just a few folks with us uh, this morning, but we want to welcome everybody to this service of worship. We're glad you're here. Glad you're part of Encounter. You know, we're very uh, sorry that we have to go back to an online format for a couple of weeks, but it's better to be safe uh, than sorry. I'll say more about that in a little bit before the, the message. But uh, I want to share with you some announcements so that you know what's going on in the life of the church and, and know about some things that you could be helping out with and be looking forward to when uh, we're out of this, uh, this uh, two-week kind of a quarantine time, if you will, for us. Uh, but before you do that, before I do that, I'd love to uh, find out uh, it, who's with us this morning online. Uh, so if you're online with us, give us a shout-out, give us a hello, uh, a welcome, whatever it may be, so we know who's here. I've I'm, I'm got the online uh, 
right here with us, and I can see we've got the, the Nordikes and the Willises are watching, the uh, Joneses are watching, the Pierces, uh, Dempseys and Teases and, and uh, several others that are watching. So give us a good hello. We'd love to see who's with us this morning online. Uh, this week, as you can imagine, we've, as we put out on Facebook, we're not doing online or in-person worship in either service. And so those in our meetings, especially Sunday meetings, are all been uh, postponed till later or, or put off till later. So there will be uh, no uh, traditional service. There's no Sunday school. There's no youth group that is in person. The youth group will be meeting online. So uh, uh, junior high and high school students, please be aware of that. If you have not received the link yet for the Zoom, be sure to contact Katie and let her know so she can uh, get that to you. Uh, let's see, the same is going to be true for next week as well. Like I said, we're online for two weeks, so please be aware of that. Uh, as always, we have our four ways of giving. Uh, we, uh, we give online uh, through our website. You can, you can uh, go to bullardfumc.org, and you can uh, find out how to give online there. Uh, you can give uh, by mailing it in to Bullard FUMC at P.O. Box 152, and then also you can drop it off at the uh, church office. So I guess we're down to three ways of giving now, for at least for the next two, uh, next two weeks. Also, uh, I want to remind you about the YouVersion Bible app that we've been using, uh, especially now that we're online for the next two weeks. This is going to be very helpful to you. Uh, we put on Facebook this morning a link to this particular event, which is our worship services, and uh, you can open that up, and uh, it'll give you the announcements. It'll give you uh, the, co the Connect card where you can fill it out for letting us know you're connected to us and you have prayer requests and things like that. Uh, it'll also give you a way of connecting to our website for giving. But then it also has great sermon notes and uh, sermon ideas there or sermon uh, uh, input there for you to make notes and all that. But be sure to save those events so that if you want to look at them later on, you have to be able to save it first. So please be aware of that. And then also with that is one of our two Advent uh, special things that we're doing during the Advent season. Of course, today is the first Sunday of Advent leading up to uh, Christmas. And on the Version Bible app, at the very bottom of, of today's worship event, you'll find a link to Scripture uh, through the Version Bible app that are, are Advent Scriptures to read. I believe there's some devotional material in there as well. Uh, but mainly I wanted people to focus on specific scriptures during the Advent season, so this is a way of doing that. But I also want to tell you about another devotional opportunity. We emailed out this last week. Uh, Katie Gage, our youth director, is a wonderful writer, and uh, she's put together four Advent devotionals, one a week during the four weeks of Advent. So uh, we encourage you to maybe use those with your family or for your personal devotions. Just these are ways that you can be intentional about your faith during the Advent season. Uh, also, uh, there's other announcements. We've got, uh, we're looking for a work nursery worker. Uh, that when we get back together, we're going to need help in the nursery. And so we're looking for somebody. If you uh, are interested in that, please contact Kimberly Brashear, my wife, who happens to be the, the preschool director at KD Brashear1973 at gmail.com, or you can call the church office and we'll give you that information. And then also, we're very excited about a trip to Whoville. Uh, if you've seen the Grinch uh, movies, the, the cartoon version, the, that uh, uh, there's the, the, a wonderful experience that we're going to have here. In the past, we've had supper with Santa, and we've had breakfast with Santa. This year, the focus is going to be uh, a night in, the, in Whoville. So it's, it's uh, two things, really. It's going to be a drive-through scenes kind of thing. I wish you could be here this morning, because all along the wall, we have these wonderfully painted scenes that are going to be used as through the drive-through part of it. And then... Uh, we'll have a drive-in movie part of it where we'll sit down and watch it. We'll be in our cars and we'll have the, uh, we've got an AM or FM transmitter so we can transmit through the radio and you can do a drive-in movie like the good old days and we'll have popcorn, I believe hot chocolate and all those kinds of good stuff. That's Saturday, December the 12th, 6 to 8 p.m. Please tell your friends about it. Get the grandkids, bring them along. Uh, it's a wonderful, fun thing that we can do. All right, one other thing for Advent that I want to tell you about is our Advent devotional bags, or our Advent to-go bags, pardon me. Uh, Deirdre, our children's director, has put these together for our kiddos. And you can pick those up. We we're going to pass them out in worship today, but we're not doing it since we can't do that in person. Um, if you'll come back by the Family Life Center this afternoon, between sometime between 3 and 6, just stop in. You don't have to stay the whole time. Just drop in. We have bags for your, uh, goodie bags for the kiddos. So be sure to come by and pick one up. 
It's our Advent to go bags for the kiddos. That'll be three to six today. Okay, I think I got everything there. I hope I did. Uh, oh, wait, alternative Christmas, sharing God's love at Christmas. Uh, once again, we're sponsoring an alternative Christmas this season, and it's a way for you to give meaningful gifts for Christmas that make a difference in the lives of God's children. Instead of struggling with what to buy people for Christmas on your list, you can honor them by making a donation to one of three charities uh, that the church has selected. You can choose the charities and the amounts you want to give, and you can pay that to Bullard FUMC, and we will take care of distributing the money to each of those or a, the individual organization that you choose. You can see the vine for more information, or uh, you can uh, uh, contact uh, Pastor Tammy and give her a call, uh, and uh, she can answer you, uh, questions that you might have about that. So I think that's now all the announcements that I have uh, at this time. Uh, I ask you to stand up and greet, but we're not greeting each other. But why don't we start with a word of prayer this morning before we dive into our worship. Gracious Lord, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for this opportunity to worship you, Lord. We pray that uh, as we begin this Advent season, you would begin shaping our hearts to the manger. Opening our hearts to your spirit. And leading our hearts as our Abba Father. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You are beautiful. You are glorious. Of magnificent God with us. You deliver me back to innocence. Though I am guilty, God for us. Death does not own you. The grave could not hold you. You tore the veil in two. God is with us. God is
hands with us man you before us you stand behind us you will never leave us man
we love you. We just lift you up today. I pray that in spite of all the things that go wrong, that we know that you're in control. Just help us to stay, stay centered in you, Lord. I pray that you'll just help us to receive the words that you have to say to us today. In Jesus' name. We're going to have um, Sherry, Perry, and Libby come and share in our Advent moment now. Today's Advent reading is going to be from Isaiah 64, verses 3 through 5 and 8 through 9. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ears have perceived, no eyes have seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You met those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways, but you were angry and we sinned because you hid yourself, we transgressed. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our father, we are the clay, you are the potter, we are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember inequity forever. Now consider we are your people. If ever there is a year that we needed Advent, this is the year. We hardly know how to describe this year that we have lived in. We hesitate to reflect on all the mess around 2020. All we know is, in the, all we know is that nothing seems right. Nothing seems like it used to be. Nothing we need Advent. The prophet Isaiah cried out for us, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down to make your name known so that nations might tremble in your presence. So tear through this mess, O oh Lord, and come down to us again. We long to be your people, a people of hope. We light this first candle of Advent as a sign of hope, hope that you can feel as you meet us. Even in the mess of our world, hope that you still see us. Though we feel we are lost in the rubble, let this light guide that brings us to Emmanuel once more. Oh, oh come, O oh come, Emmanuel. Father God, we thank you that you have promised us to be, to be with us no matter what difficult circumstances invade our lives, and you lift up our many brothers and sisters in Christ who are, fading, who are facing increasingly hard times. We are watching and waiting for the soon return of our Lord Jesus Christ, enjoying the Spirit and praying, Come, Lord Jesus. In these increasingly difficult times, we ask you for strength and courage to face whatever lies ahead, knowing that, you, knowing that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us, and nothing can separate from the love of God. With Christ, in Jesus' name, amen. y'all really appreciate that sherry and libby leading us in our advent moment uh it's uh something we have not done here in uh, our service and uh, nine o'clock service encounter but we have uh the tradition that we typically do in our our every year we do in our traditional service and this year we decide you know what let's bring this tradition uh to our early service and uh, make it be a part of what we do here so uh, I want to share this this morning uh, with, uh, with God's Word. We're going to read from Isaiah chapter 53. So if you have your Bibles with you at home, we invite you to turn to those. Isaiah chapter 53, it's verses 1 through 9. If you're home, I invite you to go ahead and stand with us because that's our tradition here. Uh, in the reading of the Word before, the, before we preach, we always uh, take time to uh, stand out of respect for God's Word. So Isaiah chapter 53 verses 1 through 9 says this. He has believed our message, and who, who has believed our message, and whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. 
Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we consider him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities, and punishment was brought, uh, that, and the punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds we are healed. We are like sheep who have gone astray. Each of us turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him all the iniquity of us all. He he was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was a lamb, like a lamb led to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent. So he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. Yet who of this his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. You know, it's good to uh, to be back with you. I've been gone for uh, about a week and a half, took some vacation time, uh, spent a little time in the deer stand and enjoyed God's creation. I have nothing to show for it other than wonderful experiences of being in God's creation and seeing. I got to see some deer, uh, but uh, the size and, and timing and all that didn't work out. Uh, uh, I'm, I do a lot of hunting. I, I don't do a lot of harvesting, <laughs> but I do a lot of hunting, so uh, I do enjoy the, the hunting part of it. You know, I hate that uh, COVID has uh, once again caused us to go online only for the next couple of weeks, this Sunday, and as I said, next Sunday. That's nobody's fault. Uh, it was really bound to happen at some point, with especially the numbers in Texas and around the United States rising the way they are. Uh, we uh, Going online for us is really a, a way of being cautious uh, and, and trying to be safe for everybody and uh, so that's, what, that's the reason why we're doing that. We do want to pray uh, for Robert Bourne. He's our traditional service uh, music director. He does have COVID. And, uh, and so we want to pray for him and his family. And, and uh, he, he says that he's doing okay. It's kind of like a bad cold, bad sinus infection. So uh, please be uh, aware of that and be praying for him. We also want to keep Pastor Tammy in our prayers. She is not feeling well. We don't know if it's COVID or not. But uh, she is homesick and is going to stay home during the time that we're online just to be safe. And uh, so be praying for both Robert and, uh, and Tammy and their families. And speaking of prayer, why don't we do that right now? Our most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this wonderful time of worship that we've had. Sharing together in your word and, and uh, sharing together uh, singing of your praises, Lord. We pray that... Uh, during this time of of message, that uh, you would open our hearts to hear from you what you want to tell us, Lord. Uh, The the scripture today is one of many passages of scripture which foretell of the the coming of Christ, the incarnation, Jesus uh, being born, uh, living and dying on our behalf. And Lord, uh, may you speak to us today through this scripture from Isaiah. Uh, This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So I have another confession for you this morning. I feel like lately I've been doing a lot of confessing uh, when it comes to, to preaching and telling sermons. But I have another confession to make. Uh, and it's, I, I, it's not the first time you've heard it. If, you, if you've been around uh, with us for a while, I, I did share this a while back. I was reminded of that. Uh, but I, wanted, I thought, well, you know, it really is fitting for what we're talking about. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share this kind of confession, if you will, uh, once again. You know, confession's good for the soul. Maybe I, you know, I'm cleansing. I don't know what it is. But uh, anyway, my confession to you this morning is that uh, when it came down to it, I was never good at waiting for Christmas. And, and I still somewhat, I'm better, but you know, I'm not perfect, you know. But I was, especially as a kid, when I was a little kid, I was not good at waiting for Christmas. In fact, I was, I, I must admit, I was downright devious uh, when it came to it. I, I wanted to know what I got. I didn't want to be surprised. I wanted to know what was coming. I wanted to know what was in those boxes. And I may or may not have learned some devious tactics from older brothers who I who I will quickly throw under the bus on this one, who taught me these things, how to open up wrapped packages with precision of a surgeon 
uh, to find out what's in them. Okay, it's a confession, I tell you, it's a confession. I know, I'm confessing here. Uh, and then to, to put them back and tape them just right so nobody knows that they may or may not have been opened to see what was going on. And it wouldn't just be mine. I would want to look and see what my brother's got too so I could go to them and say, nah, 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 I know what you're getting, and that kind of thing. And it was, we had fun with it. it we, uh, uh, we did that for a short period of time until uh, we, mom kind of made it easy for us. Uh, she, she didn't mean to, uh, but she did. Mom, like myself, uh, we have to write things down. If we, we won't remember things if we don't write them down. And so mom used to keep a little green uh, uh, loose leaf uh, notebook. It had a little binder. And uh, she would write down everything she got for everybody. You know, here's stuff for Suzanne. Here's the stuff for George. Here's the stuff for John. And when she's able to find it and buy it, she, she'd check it off. Well, we just discovered well, there's no need to go through all the hassle of trying, getting caught opening packages when, when you could just find mom's little green notebook. And, and so for years, it was a matter of trying to find Mom knew we were looking for it. Mom would hide it in various places. And, and eventually, uh, you know, we may have found it once or twice, but, but uh, eventually we gave up on, on doing that. But I remember there was one time I was home from college, and, uh, uh, and I, I, was going, I think I was looking for Q-tips or something in mom and dad's bathroom. And mom was still in the habit of hiding her little green notebook because I opened up the drawer in her bathroom and there it was. And I hadn't looked at that thing for years. And, uh, and so I pulled it out and, and, and uh, I, I thought about looking at it again. I didn't. Instead, what I did is I went and got a post-it note and I put a post-it note on the top, on the top of it that said, Hey, mom, this is a pretty good hiding place this year. And I just left it and put it back in the drawer and didn't look at what was in there. So we had our fun as kids. This was my way of confession. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it's, it, it's part of Christmas, I guess. That, that anticipation uh, for the gifts. Uh, but also it's a part of Advent. Uh, this, this great expectation. Advent is a time of great expectation. And, and really it's more than just what's under the tree especially for us as believers in Jesus Christ. It is way more than what's about uh, in the packages underneath the tree. During the four weeks leading up to Christmas that we call Advent, we prepare ourselves to celebrate afresh and anew the glorious birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As Christians, we know the true meaning of Christmas, and we know the true meaning of this Advent season. That on the night so long ago, the God of the universe came down to earth in the form of a tiny babe. God, the Father, sent uh, God, the Son, Jesus, to, to be born to the Virgin Mary. Uh, to, to be born in a, in a humble stable. To be wrapped in, in swaddling cloth. And to be laid in a manger. God's one and only Son. This tiny infant child was the Savior of the world who would one day as Isaiah so foretold, one day take upon himself all of our suffering, all of our sin, all of our shame, and bear that for us on the cross of Calvary. So that whoever believes in him might not live any longer separated from God, but whose sin might be forgiven, who might be made right with God because of what Jesus did for us on the cross so that we might then live with God eternally in heaven. This is a time of great celebration because all this came to pass because God sent His Son Jesus to be born in that humble, smelly, dirty stable for us. When Mary was visited by the angel of God and told that she was going to give birth to God's only Son, it had great meaning for her. You see, for, for, a, for a Jew such as she was, she had heard the stories of the coming Messiah. She had heard the readings of the prophets and like Isaiah and others and, and, and how they have foretold of a Messiah that would come and that would be God's Son. Uh, she was told of the stories of the Messiah's birth through the prophets. In scriptures like Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, where it says, Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, that wonderful word, Emmanuel. We sung it this morning. God is with us. 
And she would also remember Micah's words in Micah chapter 5, verse 2, where Micah wrote, But you, Bethlehem, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. So here we not only have the the prophecy of the virgin birth, but also of the place of the birth, of Bethlehem. This is is why the uh, the three kings went to search for Jesus in in Nazareth, in Bethlehem, to find him there. Yet she must also have heard the scriptures that we read this morning in Isaiah chapter 53. It must have been difficult for her to understand because these particular verses tie in not only the birth of the Messiah, but the suffering of the Messiah as well. And what Christ would have to do on our behalf as a mother, giving birth to the Savior of the world. That must have been tough to hear. When you stop to think about it, about these prophecies that I've just noted and and others that uh, we know about from reading the Old Testament, uh, it's really quite amazing when you consider how not only were they prophesied many, many thousand, hundred years earlier, but how they actually came to pass and what that really means. Sometimes we don't even think about what does that really mean when these things come to pass? Dr. Peter Stoner, who's a professor emeritus of science at Westmont College, wrote in a book titled Science Speaks about this very fact. In this book, he wrote about the law of compound probability in reference to just just eight of the eight, gotta get my numbers. I never get the numbers right. Just to eight of the prophecies that were written in the Old Testament about Jesus coming, and about how these eight came true. And he talks about what is the probability of just those eight coming true. He said that the odds of one man accidentally fulfilling eight of these detailed prophecies is one in ten to the seventeenth power. That means is that's one with 17 zeros behind it. One in the tenth and one in tenth to the 17th power. That's really quite amazing when you think about it. In order for us to understand how incredible this is and how big this number is uh, in regards to the prophecy, he gave the following illustration. He said, let's imagine you have uh, many silver dollars. In fact, you have one to the tenth to the 17th power uh, silver dollars. And you take those silver dollars and you spread them out over the entire space and land area of the state of Texas. And if you had that many silver dollars, you could do it. You could spread out all those silver dollars to a depth of two feet deep all over the entirety of the state of Texas. That's a lot of silver dollars. That's a lot of space. That's two feet deep, folks. That's the chances of it happening. Now suppose you took one of those silver dollars and you marked it with a red dot and then somehow were able to drop it from an airplane into the pile somewhere where you had no idea where it was. It just randomly put out there somewhere in the state of Texas, somewhere in that two feet deep worth of silver dollars. Now suppose one, you took one of the... Now, suppose you uh, at some point were able to begin walking across this piles of silver dollar and just in some random, you know, directions randomly and just stopped at some random place on Texas and reached into the pile of silver dollars and pulled up the one with the red dot. That is the same probability of you being able to do that on one try as it would be for eight of these prophecies about Jesus to come true as they did. And they did. Eight prophecies did come true for Jesus. In fact, not just eight, 48 prophecies came true about Jesus. And we see it in the Gospels. And we read it and we celebrate it, especially during this time of Advent. Jesus Christ, even though he was greatly misunderstood by the Jewish religious authorities, was their great expectation. He was the one of whom the prophets of old had foretold 48 different times long, long ago. The one who would bring redemption. The one who would 
who would be the sacrificial lamb of God, the one who would pay the price for our sins. Yet even with great expectations being many, the religious establishment of Jesus' day missed it. They missed it. They didn't see Jesus. If we're honest, we'll admit that in these day and times, with COVID going on and the stress that it involves, and the, 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 we're still shopping, you know, we're still online, we're still busy, we're still, you know, we're, maybe we're not having all the parties we had or doing all those kind of things, but we are still tempted to miss Christmas. Sometimes we too can miss Jesus at Christmas if we're honest. Because of the busyness, because of the stress, because of the COVID, because of the worry, because of everything else, we can miss Jesus at Christmas if we let him. And I think that we're especially tempted this Christmas to do that very thing. We're scrambling to try to find some level of normalcy and, and, and we're scrambling to try to, you know, and, and, and sometimes when, we, when things are stressed and we're trying to find normalcy and we're reaching for it, it doesn't seem to be there fully yet. And sometimes we'll, we'll allow ourselves to get lost in, in, in other distractions. And right now, I think for many of us, the distractions are on our computers, they're on our cell phones, they're on our tablets. As we're doing online shopping, we're busy looking because we're just trying to find some level of normalcy. And I'm afraid that we're more tempted these days in light of everything that's going on, in light of the stress, in light of the business, because we're trying to get away from all that, to miss Jesus in all this. We still have great expectations of fixing up our homes. We still have great expectations of, of buying all these gifts. And we have expectations of having some level of contact, whether it be through Zoom or, or be through social distance Christmas dinners or whatever it may be. We still have all these great expectations. But sometimes we can see so busy with all this. We can be so tied up in the stress of it all. We can be so tied up in the, in the busyness of it all that we too, if we're not careful, especially this year, we too can miss Jesus. It was the days before COVID-19. It was the days before online shopping. And there was a particular woman who was going through the mall. It was one of these big city malls with multiple levels. And she was going through the mall and she was doing her Christmas shopping. Uh, this was the, in the days before online shopping. And so she had not one or two gifts to buy. She had multiple gifts to buy. And she had all these packages. And she's going through the crowds. And she didn't want to try to, to go up the stairs to the next level. And, and so she went to an elevator. And, and she went to the elevator. And she, she approached the elevator. She tried to push the door, you know, the button as she could. And there were other people gathering around trying, wanting to get in the elevator as well. And sure enough, the, the doors open up. And what does she see? The elevator is full of people. And she just mutters to herself in a grumpy way, oh, great. And the people on the elevator are nice, and they try to make room as they can. They push aside, she grabs her gifts and bundles them together, and she squeezes in the elevator. And as the doors are shutting, she can be heard saying, at her breaking point, if you will, these words. She says, I think whoever came up with this Christmas junk ought to be found and strung up. To which someone in the back of the elevator quietly responded, Oh, don't worry. They've already crucified him. In the midst of, of, of decorations, in the midst of Christmas trees, in the midst of holiday Zoom gatherings and, and social distancing family visits and giving and receiving of presents, are we going to miss Jesus? As long as we let this craziness and stress get to us, as long as we allow the, 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 the online shopping to get to us, as long as we allow all of the stuff going around to get to us, we will miss Jesus if we're not intentional about Advent. One man scribbled uh, a statement on a sign hanging in a window uh, Years ago, an interesting sign was hanging in a store window during the Christmas season, and he placed it there by the store's management, and the sign said, let's make this the best Christmas ever. And someone underneath it, uh, a perceptive person, if you will, scribbled a little note to go underneath it. 
On the top it said, let's make this the best Christmas ever. But below it said, how do we top the first one? Folks, my prayer for all of us is that this Christmas will be a time of great expectation for all of us. There's nothing wrong with, with uh, uh, celebrating during this time. There's nothing wrong with, uh, with decorating during this time, you know, putting up the Christmas tree and, and, uh, and, and making plans for, for how you're going to do Christmas dinners. And, and there's nothing wrong with any of that. Please don't hear me saying that, that I'm anti-Christmas or anything. I'm not at all. But I want us to be intentional. Intentional. To seek Jesus out every single day. That song, God is with us. God is with us. God is with us. But we've got to seek His face in order to see Him. Otherwise, we'll miss Him. Otherwise, we'll walk past Him. Otherwise, we'll miss a God moment or a God opportunity or a God time. If we're not intentionally looking for Jesus during this Advent season, we too can miss what Jesus is all about. So how do we do that? How do we be intentional during the Advent season? Well, we make prayer a priority during Advent. We make scripture reading a priority during Advent. One of the ways you can do that, we gave you an opportunity this morning, we told you about through the YouVersion Bible app, if you scroll down to the bottom of this today's event, you'll find a box that says Advent on it. It's, I think it's purple or blue, whatever. You click that, it'll take you to a reading plan, a scriptural reading plan for, the, for, the, for 24 days, I think it lasts. But it goes through Advent for scriptures that you can read every single day. And you can do that. You can read those scriptures right on the YouVersion Bible app. Uh, there's a devotional that goes along with it, I think, every other day or something like that. Uh, Katie, Katie Gage's um, uh, Advent, uh, four-week Advent reading. Uh, devotional. That's in your inbox if you are on our email list. Take those times once a week to read those, maybe together as a family, maybe with your spouse, maybe by yourself. How are you going to be intentional? Be intentional. Find an Advent devotional that you like. Get one on your Kindle. Uh, read through the Gospels during this. What, what are you going to do to make this a time of great expectation. What about worship? I know we're online two weeks. Uh, guess what? We'll be back after that. Each of these Sundays, you have an opportunity. We're online with us for the next two, or in person, or online after that too. Join us for worship. Make worship a priority. So that the busyness of this world, the distractions of this world... The current fears and anxieties of this world don't take you away from what God wants to do in your life during these next four weeks. Advent's special. It should be special. Are you going to allow God to make it special for you? Would you pray with me? Lord, I pray that we are a people of great expectation. I pray that we don't just get stressed this season, don't just get worrisome this season, but Lord, that this season be exactly what we need in the midst of COVID. To reorient our hearts, to refocus ourselves, to redirect our lives back on Jesus. Some of us have been off for a while. Some of us have been uh, 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 kind of caught up in all of this mess for so long that we've kind of lost touch with you. Lord, let this be the time that we change and reconnect with you. Make Advent special. May we not only expect great things out of you in our life this Advent, but Lord, may you expect great things out of us in the way of faithfulness and obedience and servanthood and in being.
being a blessing to others. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. In your homes, sitting on your couch, maybe you're ready now to make a commitment to Christ. Maybe it's the first time you've made a commitment. Maybe it's a, a, a recommitment of sorts for this Advent season because you've allowed the season that we've been dealing with, COVID and all that, you've allowed it to be your God, to be the thing you think about most or worry about most. And instead of putting your full trust in God, maybe this day is a day of recommitment for you to lay aside your burdens, to lay aside your fears, to lay aside your anxieties, to lay aside that which, which tries to trip you up sins that so easily entangle. Lord, let this be a time of recommitment for us. Maybe you've already made your commitment to Christ and, and you're plowing ahead. You're faithful. You're doing what you can. And uh, now you're ready to, uh, to make a commitment to God by becoming a member of this church, by showing faithfulness to God through faithfulness in this church. If that's you, in any of these situations, we'd love to talk to you about it me a call. Give Pastor Tammy a call. Give us contacts to the church this week. Let us know how we can pray for you. How we can celebrate with you. Let us join together to sing our closing song. Jesus desperately wants an intimate relationship with you. He doesn't want it to be uh, you to be a Christian in title only. He doesn't want you to go through the motions. He doesn't want you to, to do this just because this is what mom and dad did. Jesus wants a personal, loving, saving relationship with you. And he invites you into that today. So go. Walk with the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for joining us.
God, you capture my heart again. Yeah, you capture my heart again. Oh, it captured my heart. 